um, when pastor commissioned me to go ahead and come forth this morning, I've been studying something and it's been a couple months of me studying this. So I'm just giving you a couple pieces of the nuggets that I've learned thus far because um, I'm thoroughly not finished. Amen. But what he has me going through is pride. You know, that verse, he brought me to that scripture, pride goeth before the fall and a hearty um, a spirit before before the fall. Sorry, pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. And I'm like, hmm, looking at that. Well, we hear pride coming before the fall, you know, all the time. And being who I am and who I am in the Lord, amen, I got to go further investigate because I'm like, well, start it there with, well, what is pride? You know, what is really the definition of pride? You know, how does that come in and how does that play and where are examples of pride? So um, we're going to start there. The first thing that I had to look for was the definition of pride. Now, according to the Oxford Language Dictionary, amen, in, if you use it in the form of a noun, well, I'm taking you back to elementary school now, let's go. We know a noun is a person, place, a thing, right? So if you use it in the form of the na a noun, the definition reads, a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements, the achievements of those with whom who is closely associated or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. Then if you use it in the form of a verb, because it can be used in the word of verb, in the way of a verb, which is pride. That definition gives, be especially proud of a particular quality or skill. So I'm like, okay, you know, and it started making me think, and when we say to our kids, you know, um, I'm proud of you or this, and, and that starts the person, place, now, and thing, you thinking about that. And I'm like, well, what is pride according to God's knowledge? Because that's man's knowledge. So then I had to go in and get it. What does God say pride is? So we're going to start there because pride comes in so many different forms. And I'm letting the Lord have his way. He'll lead me and guide me as we go, because all I have in front of me, y'all, is a whole bunch of scripture. OK, so we're going to go ahead and God's going to fill in what we need to fill in this morning. Amen. So hope you have your notes ready, because the first place he's told me the first thing that I paid attention to was the fact that pride makes you think that you're completely reliant upon yourself. And I'm like, hmm, and how I got that because you forget God in the process. And I was like, uh, how I got that was going back and studying Deuteronomy chapter eight. And I will have you turn there, Deuteronomy chapter eight. And we're gonna read this together. Um, and verse 11 through 17. And this is the time where giving you a little background this is the time where moses had gave you know done all he could on here and god told him you ain't going to the promised land so he went and gave his last couple of sermons and gave instruction on them as to what to do as they get ready to enter the promised land so this was one of the things he started talking about because he warned them not to forget the lord so right here it says beware that thou forget not the lord thy god in keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which i commanded thee this day lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built godly house goodly houses and dwelt therein and because remember, God told him he's going to give them land they didn't cultivate, give them houses they didn't build, right? Mm -hmm. Then it says in 13, and when thy herds and thy flocks and thy multitude, silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that hast, all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Then if you drop on down, because he continues going, you drop on down to 16, who fed thee in the wilderness, talking about God, with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee. That was the whole point of them being out there to do thee good at thy latter end. And the key point is 17. And thou say in thine heart, my power and the might of mine hand have gotten me this wealth. So when you look at that, that's part of pride because pride will have you fooled into thinking that you have done what God has done and you're not God. God mm -hmm. is God and God is God alone. And we see that there where people say, oh yeah, I go to work, I do all this and I got the check and everything like that. Well, who blessed you with the job to get the check? 
Who made sure that the interview went well? Who made sure to drop things in your head so that you can remember how to operate this when they asked you a question about something that you ain't studied or hadn't looked at for a couple of years? Who gave you that job? Who put you in this earth? Who did that? Who gave you the breath to get up to go to work every single morning? Who woke you up? It was not the alarm clock. Don't get it twisted and don't be fooled. And that's what pride does. Pride will make you believe that you are your own God. And then you forget God in the process because now you've gotten full, you've gotten happy, happy, and now you're comfortable. And now you're saying, it was my own hand who did it. That was the first example of pride because then we talk about what God says because then God came back to them. Moses came back in, in chapter nine, right there in Deuteronomy where we already are, if you're turning with me, and we're just gonna read verses four and five because he tells them, you know, you're coming up and you're gonna go possess this land. And then he tells them, don't get confused. Don't play yourself because he says in verse four, speak not thou in thine heart, because we know God knows the thoughts of man's heart. So they ain't give word to this, but he knows what's in your heart. He said, speak not to thou in thine heart after the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, saying, for my righteousness, the Lord brought, hath brought me to into this process uh, to possess this land. And ain't that sometimes what we do? God bless me with this because I go to church every Sunday. God has blessed me with this because I've been doing his work. God has blessed me with this because, no, no, no. God gave it to you because he's good. Amen. There's a reason behind it all. Because then he says right there, follow down, before the wickedness of these nations, the Lord do drive them out from before thee. It ain't nothing that you did. It's because you're going and you're doing God's purpose. And then he says in five, which kick tripped me out right here, not for thy righteousness or for thy uprightness of thine heart, dost thou go to possess their land before the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. so that he can fulfill his covenant. So you fulfilling his purpose. And what does he tell us? In him we live, move, and have our being. Mm -hmm. So your whole breath is because of God. Mm -hmm. And as we discussed this morning, it doesn't matter whether you save, whether you not save, whether you believe in the Lord or whether you not, you still, as the Bible says, all is subject unto him. Yes. So you're still performing what thus saith the Lord. And then we're going to go ahead and keep on because the next thing that I noticed when it, when talking about pride and I'm looking for examples in the Bible of pride, pride will have you to believe you got it all figured out and you don't need instructions. Mm -hmm. Now, what he brought me to was Jeremiah. And if you go ahead and turn to Jeremiah, we'll get into that. Amen. If you don't want to put in your notes, Jeremiah chapter 13 is where we're going. Amen. I had this all printed out and I'm trying to find it, but it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and go with it, Lord. You got me turning. So Jeremiah, we're going to Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 19 and 10. Because right there, I'm looking in Jeremiah, you know, that was the first sign that Pastor gave me was the book of Jeremiah, okay? So he he's special to me. He is a special friend to me in this word, amen? So verse uh, chapter 13, verse 9 and 10, and it said, Thus saith the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. This evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their hearts and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. Okay. So right there, you don't need instructions. You're walking after your own heart. You ain't taking into account to walk the way God, because God says the just shall live by faith. We're supposed to be living by faith and not by sight. We're supposed to be doing things, not with the temporal things that we can see, but laying up our treasures, things that we cannot see. But when you're sitting here and you're doing what you want to in the imagination of their heart, like he destroyed no them in Noah's day, because he said even their imaginations were wicked. So now you're looking at that pride is that example. 
pride will have you there. Then he goes on to tell me because I'm like, well, what does God say about this form of pride? And then he takes me over to my book that I love, which was Proverbs. We're going to go into Proverbs chapter 12, verse one. Put it in your notes. I'm going to read it, but you can go ahead and put that in your notes so you have it ready to go. Um, chapter 12, verse one. And it reads, whosoever loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. So you got to love instruction Amen. and in, in a prideful person, because then let me go ahead and read 15, put it in your notes again, Proverbs 15, 32. It says right there. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. Amen. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. So what does that mean? Because pride to have you X yourself out. Pry to have you believing that you don't need to take instruction. We do that often. You know, we go into this whole thing of where I don't need to hear anything because I've already arrived. You see it at the job. You see it every day. You go to work, you know, and I use that as an example because that's something that we all do. If not, you've had experience working, being young or old, young or older. You go into the job and you'll hear people talk bad about the supervisor, the person in that position, like they can do it better. But the problem is that is not where God has you. He yeah. has planted you where he wanted you to be. And until he puts you in that position, you're supposed to support. Because as pastor always say, and as we always say on these studies, you've got to be a good follower before you can be a good leader. And yeah. that's why it's hard for people to follow God, because it requires you to follow. Yeah. It requires you to denounce yourself yeah. and your feeling in order to do what thus saith the Lord. Because right there, if you look at he refuseth instruction, despiseth his own soul. What do they say? You shoot your nose off to spite your face. Don't even know, you know, that you're a fool at, at the end of the part. You don't even know that you're being foolish. And then he goes on in there. But he that heareth reproof, getteth understanding. That's humble. And that's what he has me studying. Pride versus pride and humility. What is the difference? Because humility is God. But then pride, that's it. Sometimes it's subtle and you don't even know you're being prideful. Because we have, when I said pride, and I'm going to I said pride, everybody, everyone individually through here, and you could tell the truth, you had your own made up mind of what pride looks like, of what it looks like, what it sounds like from your own understanding. But we don't want to use our lean, not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct our path. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at that, I'm like, hmm, there's ways in pride that you didn't even know existed. I didn't even know existed because he goes into not, not just you not taking instruction because then the next thing he, he showed me was pride loves attention. Amen. Pride loves the credit. They love to be credited. They love applause. Amen. They want to be seen and they want to be seen in the place of God. And he had me go through a couple things. Okay. Daniel, Found it. Thank you, Lord. Ha ha ha. It was under the video thing. Okay. I got them all printed out, y'all, so we ain't got to take time turning. Thank you, Lord. I knew he was going to come through. Okay. Sorry. Have my own little video. I was like, Lord, I know I printed these things. I went, are they there? This is bothering me. It's throwing me off. Got it. Okay. Praise the Lord. Daniel chapter four. Put it in your notes now. Daniel chapter four, verse 30 through 32. Now, he had me reading up on Nebuchadnezzar. Now, this is Nebuchadnezzar, and this is the point where God had turned him into an ox. Okay, and I'm like, okay, why did he turn him into the ox? Now, remember, I'm just dealing with the word, pride. And then he goes in, he says, the king in, in 40, chapter uh, 4, verse 30, the king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power for, for the honor of my majesty? Now, this is never the talk. While the word was in the king's mouth, because see, God did this and he taken credit. And it says, while the word, while he's speaking this, while that word was in his mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The king is departed from thee and they shall drive thee from men and thy 
dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. Now I want to pause there because what does the Bible tell us? He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. So when you look at this upon further instruction, instruction, the voice came from heaven saying, now he's talking to the King of this earth, Nebuchadnezzar, right? The King of this earth. He says, the kingdom is departed. The kingdom, not Lord, let thy kingdom come. The kingdom is departed from thee and thy shall drive thee among men. Thy dwelling place shall be upon the beast of the field. Thou shall make thee to eat grass and oxen and seven times shall pass over thee. And then this important part, until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. So he didn't even get turned back until he came to a point of humbling himself because you see that in verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. So pride loves the credit. They want to be in the place of God. They take the credit for what God's done. So how do we see that today? How does it show up today? I prayed for her. Now she healed. Wait a minute. You prayed, Amen. but who did you pray to? Amen. That's why at the end of prayer, we in Jesus name. Amen. I'm praying in Jesus name. Your will be done, God. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what I think should happen. It doesn't matter if I want this person to live. That has nothing to do with it. If your will is for them to be done on this yes, earth. Amen. Yes, amen. So not my will, Lord. In all these things I ask, Lord, your will be done. Yes, yes. I said what I wanted to say because God knows it's in your heart. So you get it off your heart. You tell him about it. And then you tell him, but it's up to you. Amen. But it's up to you. That's a humbling position. Because see, pride won't let you do that. Because see, pride wants to operate it. Pride makes it where, who am I to pray to something I cannot see? Why am I doing that? When I know I'm real, so I can be my own God. I can do me, I know better. It's humility to say, I don't know. Lord, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I don't even know if I'm going to make it through this sermon, Lord. You take it and you use all of me. That's how you have to think. That's where humility has you. But pride won't do that. And then he said he wants to be seen. Then he showed me then in Matthew. <laughs> and we go going in Matthew. He took time with me here because Matthew 23, 6 through 7, because I had questions of the Lord. You know, I ask my questions and then I go to his word and I get my answers. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, he'll build upon that. You know, for me, I can't speak for everybody else, but that's what I do because I'm like, I don't like to sit in a place and we shouldn't be comfortable sitting in a place where we have a question, but we don't go seeking for the answer because that's why he said, seek me and you'll find me. So, and he said, thirst after righteousness and you're going to be filled. So I'm trying to be filled with him, not me. I want my spirit to be gone. As David said, Lord, give me all of you. You know, I want it all. So therefore, when you look and you don't just sit on a question, God has me, you don't just sit on a question. You go try and find that answer. You try and see what God says about it. That's how you study. That's how you study to show yourself approved unto God. You, a workman need not be ashamed of rightly dividing this word of truth. That's how you study. Go get the answer because he says it's there. It's there for you. You just don't want the instruction because pride likes to stay in a point of, I don't know, because, it, because if I were to admit, as we talked this morning, if I were to admit that I don't know the answer, what does that mean for me? Mm. I'm not exalted. Amen. So I'd rather run and tell you anything, even though it's incorrect, mm -hmm. than to not give you an answer. That's why there's a lot of preachers out here giving ill advice. Amen. Because they don't want to be seen like they don't have it all together. Mm. Because quick to say, that's why I say I love Pastor Look, quick to say, I don't know the answer, but we can look this thing up together. Mm. We'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Right? He showed me in Matthew. Chapter 23, 6 and 7. And love the uppermost rooms of feast, at the feast, 
and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the market and to be called of men rabbi rabbi which means teacher right so this is where matthew was talking about those but cross property they like to be seen they like the highest seats in the marketplace yes. they like you to address because we see some people they love the titles yes. pastor reverend yes. minister but don't want to do what's called to that title say something because that title, to be honest, what does the Bible tell us? The greatest when the when um, thank you, Lord, when when the disciples were arguing amongst themselves, like which position is better, which one is greater than these, and Jesus had to silence them all and said, The greatest of these is the least of these. Come on. The least of you, the one who serves. Because mm -hmm. that's all that title means is to serve. That's what Levitical priests forgot as we've been reading this morning in our studies, that's what they forgot. That your whole inheritance is the service of the Lord. Yes, amen. Then he showed me there in Acts, and this is where I'll go. And upon set day, now he showed me in Herod, you know, Herod, King Herod, thought he was getting there, and we know Herod. But he said right here, he was arrayed in apparel, and this is uh, Acts chapter 12, verse 21 and 20 through 23, set upon his throne and made an orientation unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, it is the voice of God, lowercase g, and not of man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not glory, gave not God the glory. He was eaten by worms and given up the ghosts. Because okay. mm -hmm. pride. Pride mm -hmm. wants to take the place of God. Amen. And you notice that this whole time, you notice that this whole time, I haven't mentioned Satan once. That was what he had me come to realize about a month ago. Satan, some give too much credit to Satan. Amen. And then I honest, I honestly, honestly, it's you. Amen. It's you. It's you in your own way, in your own will, and your own thoughts. Yes, I didn't mention Satan in here one time. And I love it because I was watching a movie a while ago and it's like with Will Smith and his son, you know, the earth is ending or whatever. And there was a line in there that he said to him, he's like, you know, danger is real, but fear is not. You can choose to be fearful or not. And we look at that right there because we get into this point where God doesn't exist and that was the that was the last thing I'm going to bring forth. God doesn't exist. Pride will have you believe in God doesn't exist. And if he doesn't exist, that means, you know, you're not trusting. Him. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's like danger is real. And as the pastor said this morning, because it hit me there because it further brought that up for me in my mind, was that. God says <laughs> she said um, this morning, it rains on the jest as well as the unjust. Mm -hmm. So we all go through. Mm -hmm. The difference is we're going through it with God mm -hmm. on your side. Mm -hmm. Because God says, if he's for you, who can be against you? And he said, cast all your cares on me because mm -hmm. I care for you. Mm -hmm. He said, my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. So it's easy for you to trust him. Yes. But it takes faith to trust him. Amen. Because what is faith? The evidence of things not seen, but hoped for. Yes. So it takes that to trust him. Pride won't let you trust him because pride has you believing that he doesn't exist. Even though you know there's something there, but you talk yourself into believing that he doesn't exist so that you can continue to do your own will. Because as we say, he's a gentleman, he's not going to force himself on you. And that's that's the last thing I have right there. Because God says in his word, what does he say about it? He said, foolish is a man who says there is no God. Mm. And that's Psalms chapter 14, verse one. Foolish is a man who says there is no God. Why? Because he showed me that when I looked, and this is where I closed, in Psalms chapter 10, verse four, the wicked through the pride of his continents. And I had to look up the word continents and what that meant. And then he said, will not seek after God. And continence is like your own personal will, really, what it boils down to. Will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Well, if God is not in all his thought, all your thoughts, that means he does not exist to you. Mm -hmm. 
So you don't technically have to say God doesn't exist like an atheist in order to be an atheist. That's why when he says, choose this day whom you will serve, you cannot serve two masters. You love the one, hate the other because you're serving the other, whether you know it or not. Because if God is not in your thoughts, because what is what did he tell us? Let this mind pass the quotes it all the time. Let this mind that be in Christ also in me. Right. Lord, keep this at the forefront of my thoughts. Keep your ways. Let me go in your ways. So if you're not thinking about him, of course, you're not trusting him because that takes humility to trust God. Yeah. When you trust God, it takes humility to say that I don't know it all. It takes humility to be there because he tells us in Proverbs, he that is of a proud heart stirreth of strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whosoever walketh wisely, he, sh he so shall be delivered. Mm -hmm. So we want to walk wise this morning. We want to walk wise. We don't want to walk in pride because pride is subtle and pride separates you from the promises of God. It really does. It separates you from the promises of God. So whenever you get to the point where in your mind, because I had to write this you know, down and start saying it myself, whenever I got to a point where I started to be in doubt and not trusting God, because that is a form of pride of me not trusting him. Because then I'm 86 in myself out because he promised me I'm going to take care of you. He promised me to cast all my cares on him. So if I'm picking that care back up, that means I got pride because I'm believing that you can't handle it, God. Ha, ha, mm, mm. Sorry, y'all. One more because I want to end there and I'm going to have to turn here because that it just hit me now and I'm done right there because he told them in Isaiah. I was wondering why he said that. I, even I, he that comforteth you. He was getting mad with them. God said, you know, who are you to even be afraid? That's still a pride. It's still a pride thing. So you got to say to yourself when you start feeling that, that heart, we're not going to do this today. I'm not going to be afraid of the future and nullify the promises of God. No heart. I will not exalt myself with anxiety. I will, I will humble myself in the peace and joy as I trust this precious and great promise of God. He cares for me. You got to remind yourself when you're going through God cares for you and denounce pride because pride will separate you from